Hi, library friends. I'm Miss Connie from the Hopeful Branch, and welcome to the Author Study Program. We've been doing this series all summer, and if you've missed any of the episodes, you can watch them again on our YouTube channel. You just go to mcl.org, and then you're going to look for our YouTube channel, and then there's a specific playlist for the Author Study Program. And there's se several episodes before this one, and a few that will play till the end of the summer. So I would encourage you to go take a look at those. We've had some wonderful authors this summer, including today's author, which is Marjorie Kyler. And the program will look like this. We're going to learn a little bit about her life. We'll take a quick look at some of the many books she's written. Then we're gonna listen to her, read her own story, which is Bonaparte Plays Ball. And then we'll come back together and we'll take a minute to look at her website. So a little bit about Marjorie Kyler. Uh, this is her name and a picture from her website, which we will take a look at later. She is a local author. She grew up in the oldest house in Princeton. Uh, she grew up with three brothers, a sister, and four cousins, and they spent a lot of time playing charades and hide and seek and Monopoly and chess, and they would write and perform their own plays. And her parents read aloud to them every night. And she has been writing stories ever since she could write. As an adult, she has written more than 50 children's books and has also had executive positions in companies such as Henry Holt and Marshall Cavendish and Amazon. So now I'd like to talk about and show you some of Marjorie Kyler's books. She's written picture books and chapter books and nonfiction books. Um, in our catalog at mcl.org, there are five pages of her books. Uh, mostly physical books, hard copy books that you can take out of the library, but also some things in our virtual branch. For example, I listened to The Biggest Best Snowman today on Hoopla, um, and there are other eBooks that she has on Hoopla. So if you are not yet coming back into the library and you have some kind of device, your adult can help you um, listen to some of her books that way listen to or read, actually read them. Some of them are ebooks. So let me show you some of the things that I have um, that were in my branch. We have, we're going on a lion hunt. You'll see she is an author, she's not an illustrator. So you'll, you can tell that some of her books are, are drawn by different illustrators. This one is about Groundhog's Day. It's called Groundhog Stays Up Late. That was a cute one. This is guinea pigs add up. That's good, that's bad in Washington, DC. This little boy goes on a class trip and visits a lot of places in Washington, DC. That's a cute one. Um, here are two that are related. This is please play safe. A Penguin's Guide to Playground Safety. And then this one is Please Say Please, Penguin's Guide to Manners. And so those books have some of the same characters in them. These are also with the same illustrator. Okay, so I have the little dump truck, the little school bus, and the little ice cream truck. And I just want to show you the inside of one of these. These are really cute and colorful. I just love this one. Who doesn't love an ice cream truck, right? Let's see if I have another good page. Ooh, this is lots of children to look at and great colors. I really like that one. I also have here Princess Bess gets dressed. There's a little sparkle on that cover. 
These two are also by the same um, illustrator, Bullies Never Win. That was a good one. And 100th Day Worries. Also a good one. And then this one is sweet. It's kind of themed around Halloween and it's the Bumpy Little Pumpkin. And more recently, she has Bonaparte, who is an adorable little skeleton. The first one is Bonaparte Falls Apart. And now she is gonna to read to us this, which is a newer book. And it is called Bonaparte Plays Ball. And I know you're gonna enjoy it. It's really special when the author reads her own book because she can add in some details that we wouldn't um, know if she wasn't there to tell them to us. So enjoy. Hello, my name is Marjorie Kyler and I am a children's book author. And I'd like to thank the Hopewell Public Library for asking me to participate in their summer uh, reading program for 2020. So this will be a virtual visit. I'll miss uh, being with kids uh, right in the same room, but this is the best we can do. And I'm, I'm happy to be here. So I've decided to read my latest book, Bonaparte Plays Ball. It's a sequel to another book called Bonaparte Falls Apart. Bonaparte is the skeleton and he's called Bonaparte because his bones are always falling apart. And in the first book, his friends try to glue him together or tape him together or nail him together so that he can go to school without being embarrassed. Um, nothing works until the end and I really don't want to surprise the end. I would just, you know, I don't want to spoil the surprise um, because I want you to read the book. And uh, instead, we'll just go to the second book, uh, which is Bonaparte Plays Ball. It's a baseball story, and Bonaparte uh, is very anxious about how he'll do um, in a baseball game where he'll be on the little monsters team playing against the mighty aliens in the weird series, which is my version of the World Series. So let's see how he does. Oh, I want to show you the end papers because... Um, if you look closely, you'll see a pattern of bones and baseballs. And here's Mandible, Bonaparte's dog, um, retrieving a ball. I think that's such a nice touch by Will Terry, the illustrator. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. It was the weird series. Bonaparte's team, the Little Monsters, was playing the Mighty Aliens on Saturday. Now, here's the Mighty Aliens team. They're kind of scary. Um, Bonaparte's nervous. Bonaparte was a jittery jumble of bones. What if he lost his backbone while at bat? What if his fetching dog, Mandible, dropped one of his loose bones. What if the mighty aliens made fun of him? Bonaparte gets easily embarrassed, I should say. Coach Roach, and here he is, he's supposed to kind of resemble a cockroach. <laughs> Coach Roach touched base with the team. You need to practice hard all week, he said. That's how you win. Bonaparte whacked and thwacked. He hopped and bopped. See, he's still losing his bones, but there's Mandible ready to catch them. He zigged and zagged. So he's trying really hard to do all the drills so that he can perform well in the weird series. So let's see how he does. Finally, Saturday came. The monsters took the field as the mighty aliens clattered and scattered to their dugout. 
We'll eclipse you, monster shattered moon bob. Here's moon bob. He's one of the aliens. The aliens were up first. Flamethrower clobbered a double and charged to second. Egg cracker, here's egg cracker, slapped a single scrambling to first. The aliens had two strikeouts before Galactic Slimer slugged a moonshot into outer space, allowing his teammates to orbit the bases on his three-run homer. But their turn at bat ended when Mega Meteor streaked a fly ball to right field for the final out. Now it was the now the monsters were up. Mamicula was the leadoff batter. Here's Mamicula. He's a mummy, um, and he plays a pretty important role in the first book. Um, so here he is back again. He belted a bouncer down the middle as he hurried and scurried toward first. His bandages ripped and he tripped. Egg Cracker ran forward and tagged him out. This is Egg Cracker. What a bad break, muttered Bonaparte. Now Frankie Stein, he's another good friend of Bonaparte. Now Frankie Stein stomped to the bat batter's box. After two strikes, he screwed up and smacked the ball to first base. You're out, yelled the umpire. But after Zombie and Batula both hit singles, landing on first and second, Bonaparte shook his way into the batter's box. He swung at a curveball. Strike one. Your head's in the clouds, thundered Sky Boomer. He's an alien. He swung at a fastball. Strike two. You need more meat on your bones, shouted Mega Meteor. That's Mega Meteor, who's on the uh, aliens team. A slider streaked past him. Strike three. I hope this won't be a shutout, Bonaparte worried on his way back to the dugout. The next four innings were no better. By the end of the fifth, the score was Mighty Aliens 5, Little Monster 0. We're running rings around you, Screech, said Turnicus. He's an alien. Let's sweep them off the field, said Witchy, and she's on the Little Monsters team. These are all the Little Monsters in the dugout. Coach Roach tried to pump up the team. Never give up, he said. It ain't over till it's over. Let's vaporize them, cried Ghosty. This is a view of Ghosty from the back. Let's squash them, yelled Pumpkinhead. At the top of the sixth, the monsters roared back to life, retiring the aliens one by one. Bonaparte was so charged up he could barely hold himself together. When it was the monster's turn, Mamicula tried to keep his excitement under wraps as he faced down the pitcher. Mamicula shot a line drive to left field, sliding into first before he could be tagged. So yay, he got to first base. Next, Frankie Stein laid down a bunt, and Zombie zipped the ball to right field for a single. <gasps> the bases were loaded. The little monsters threw their mitts into the air and started cheering, We can't be beat. We can defeat, they chanted. They're getting really excited now because the, maybe they have a chance to score. So let's see what happens. Luckily, Batula, the monster's cleanup hitter, was up next. Now, here's Batula, and he's modeled on Dracula, who in an adult book is a famous vampire. So, And he's the best hitter on the team. So let's see how he does. As he grabbed the bat, Snatcher, who's the alien uh, catcher, flashed garlic at him. Batula fainted. 
So I don't know if you know this or not, but vampires hate garlic. It makes them weak. And so he was kind of a, a bad guy to like take garlic. I mean, that's sort of dishonest, right? Flashing it in front of Batula, who then gets lowered into his coffin. Rebolting, cried Frankie Stein. Boo, shouted Ghosty. Skullduggery, screamed Bonaparte. Coach Roach called for a time out. I guess you could almost say that was cheating, right? Suddenly, Bonaparte had a brainstorm. He grabbed a blood orange juice box and teetered to Bachelor's coffin. We're in trouble, yelled Bonaparte, shaking his friend awake. The mighty aliens are out for blood. He helped Batula sit up and poured the juice down his throat. Now, vampires do very well if uh, they get to drink blood or, in this case, uh, blood orange juice. It kind of revives them. So that was a really good idea of Bonaparte's because the next thing that happened is Bonaparte high-fived him, then leaped up and flew to the plate. Gripping the bat, he smashed a grand slam. Bonaparte walked to first. Then Blackie Widow knocked in two runs before the rally ended with a double play and a pop-up. Now it was a whole new ball game. And look at the crowd. They're getting very excited. And they're all kind of monstery and they look like aliens as well. So no humans in this book. The monsters were still flying high during the seventh inning stretch. Monsters, monsters, rah, rah, rah. Aliens, aliens, ha, 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 they chanted. But the mighty aliens battled back in the eighth with Moon Bob hitting a dinger to tie the score. It was a white knuckle game. The score was still tied at the bottom of the ninth with just one out left after Zombie and Batula struck out. <gasps> it was all up to Bonaparte. Never give up, never give up, never give up, Bonaparte repeated, quivering and shivering, but gaining courage as he clickety-clacked to the plate. Greased Lightning. This is Greased Lightning over here. He's the uh, Mighty Aliens uh, relief pitcher. So Greased Lightning, the Aliens relief pitcher, fired a slider. Bonaparte whipped the bat around and swung for the fences. He connected with a bone-crunching wallop. Pow! So the ball goes sailing away, but so does his arm. Bonaparte's arm reached first base before he did, but he snapped it into place. Then he rattled around the bases, touching home plate for the walk-off home run. The final score was Little Monster 7, Mighty Aliens 6. The Little Monsters had won the game. You really went to bat for us, yelled Bonaparte's friends, throwing him into the air. Uh-oh, he's lost his foot bone this time. But even the mighty aliens had to admit that uh, Bonaparte was a shining star. Bonaparte was so excited he fell to pieces. But he didn't care. Mandible was there to put him back together. He is a great therapy dog. He knows how to retrieve those bones. And here again are those great end papers with mandible clutching a bone at the end. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this baseball story. I know it's a little depressing that baseball season has been um, postponed, but I hope you're going to uh, play some games this summer. And I enjoyed reading to you and have a great day. Bye bye. Did you enjoy listening to Marjorie Kyler? read Bonaparte plays ball. I loved it. I loved how she didn't just read the story, 
but that she also added little bits of information that made it even more interesting. And um, I wanted to show you her website before we finish today. It's marjoriekyler.com. It has her picture like I showed you before. And it starts out with some information about her life. And there are also, go across the top bar here, there are photos that you can look at. So photos of her family and her children and the oldest house in Princeton and books. There are lists of her books. If you wanna read more of her books uh, new titles, I wanted to be sure and show you that she's got a new title coming out this fall. It's called Snow Friends, and it looks like it's going to be really good. So I'm looking forward to seeing that book. Um, if, when you continue across the top, there are reviews and information about author visits and ordering books and honors and links and a guest book. And I wanted to mention under the links, there are several links there. One of them is for auth author Tara Lazar, who happens to be the author that we're going to look at next week. She is another New Jersey author, and it's very fun to learn about our local authors that are so popular. Um, I had actually, when I was doing research for this, found an article on Tara Lazar's website where she also interviewed Marjorie Kyler, and it's entitled Bonaparte Plays Ball, Another Marjorie Kyler Hit, which I would agree with, and it was a great article. And in another article about Marjorie Kyler, I found at communitynews.org, by Michelle Alper and it was dated September 26, 2017. She asks Marjorie what some of her favorite children's books are. And she mentions Wonder, which if you've ever read Wonder, I bet it's on your favorite list. It's on my favorites list too. And she also mentions a second book, which is 789 which is by Tara Lazar. So I thought that was kind of fun that they mention, they kind of mention each other. Um, so I, before we end, I wanted to say a big thank you again to Marjorie Kyler who prepared that video especially for us and we loved it. So thank you so much. And I wanted to remind you, if you want to find more information about her, you're going to want to visit her website, get your grown-up to help you find that at MarjorieKyler.com. And that is an exclamation point on the end of that line. I don't want you to get confused there. And remind you that you can see this video again or watch other videos about the author study or... Um, any of our other programs on our YouTube channel. And you can look specifically for the playlist for the author study program to see this program. And thanks for joining me today and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.